Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Jim and Sam Town Square. I'm Scott King. Jim and Sam fans know me from the Forbes articles, and I'm joined, as always, by multi-Emmy award-winning TV producer Chris Cangilla. Today, this episode, we're recapping week two of August 2023. Chris, I, I was just thinking before we started recording this, you know, it's always fun sending the notes back and forth, but I feel like it's a sweet spot right now. I feel like it's been a couple weeks of two or three guests, good, interesting guests, but it's it's just the guys talking, ripping on each other, breaking down ridiculous current events. I I, I mean I I love this week. I always say Monday's the strongest. I, I feel like later this week was the strongest for me. I, I I loved everything. I loved all the talk in studio, and we'll break it down. You know you uh you always know that I appreciate the guys just hanging out. I could do yeah, without you're, guests. You're dead on. You're yep. dead on. With it. And it was it was perfect. And I think we're just you know enjoying that they're back from vacation. And they're in stride of of delivering the stuff that we like. Yeah, I know gigs are getting in the way. Like we're hearing about gigs, but everyone's back on time. It's been like, I feel like what, two weeks of no one being too late or missing a show or anything. Uh, Speaking of gigs, first thing we're going to cover is, now this is something that I didn't think, I I told you and you agreed that we we wanted to hear what was going to happen, you know, almost minute by minute with uh, Hot Dog and Sam's dad traveling with Sam to a gig in Detroit, also a, uh, I think it was a SummerSlam, a big, a big WWE event in Detroit. We got, we got hot dog, uh, a mishap. I'll let you cover. And, and we did get Jim texting. It was like a six hour drive. I think, uh, Sam said from New York, we got a little more. I think oh, it's a little almost, more than that. I think it's about nine, right, nine to 10. Right. Yeah. That's almost what it is like from here the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From where we are. But Jim was I kept text, texting to ask, are you there yet? Which I'm sure yeah. did not help them get there any faster. Uh, so I'll let you go with, uh, I get, we got a little commentary I, I, on this. What, what, yeah, what did I got a little do wrong this time? Well, I'll table that for one second, just because yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the the trip. First, oh, odd matching of Sam's dad, hot dog, and Sam. It's almost as weird as you know Jim having Soraya's mom and Soraya, you know, over to the house yeah. for the uh, for the July Fourth soirée. But um, yeah, so they they had that, and Sam's dad was in the back seat by himself. And hot dog was in the front, and Sam said he was kind of dozing off. And you don't do that right, if you're right. in the front. You got to help keep the driver awake. But Sam said his dad, or Jim said that his dad needed all the room for condiments and buttermilk, you know, in the back <laughs> seat that you know Sam dad's like. But yeah, so they did the trip, and everything went pretty good. And they said, you know, it's nice to have serious re- uh, XM, you know, radio, satellite radio when you're on a long trip. And I agree. God knows that that's when I use it the most. And and so yeah, I, I do appreciate satellite radio when you're. Because it's the same stuff throughout the whole trip. You know, you have to try to yeah. find a station. But anyway, yeah. um, hot dog screwed up. And and we'll get to what, you know, is a question of why do we keep on allowing this? But he did a logo for Sam that was in black characters, font, whatever you want to call it. Not Sam Wrestling logo. Yeah, not his logo. And that logo was going to be projected on a black background. Which black they, on black does not time. work. Yeah, they had that info ahead of time. And Sam has a yoke, a, a logo that has a yellow and then it has a black outline. So you'd be able to see he didn't choose that one. What's going on there, man? His reasoning, as Sam explained it, was that he thought because the way Sam's studio was that, hey, that's black on black. That'll work. Didn't understand the whole outline thing and just how it looks with his eyes. And uh, real quick, back to the road trip. Like I, w- I was waiting for like to hear that hot dog like rub Sam's dad the wrong way somehow or had awkward conversations or didn't interact with him. Right. We didn't get that, but we did get this mishap and you're, you're right. Like this is another thing. And we just, every time there's, there's work to be done w- with hot dog for Sam or, or a social thing. There's always just, there's always just there's screw, ups. screw ups. There's yeah. just screw ups. And I, I've said this before. Uh, and people say this about Jerry Seinfeld. I think they've said it on the show is that Sam doesn't suffer fools. No, so he doesn't with anyone else. He hates small talk. He gets, I think he gets a little bit of anxiety. He's talked about that a little bit, but why, again, why does he keep letting hot dog do these things? And so I re- asked Travis about this when I interviewed yeah. him for the Forbes article and <clears throat> uh, which I don't know if th- this response made it in or not. Uh, but Travis said that just cause like hot dog, something about how he's dependable and that like, he's good with tasks. 
apparently not. Is he? Like all we hear is he's not, <laughs> so I I don't know. Like and then I think uh, I think Sam just likes having him around. I just think Sam I, needs somebody like that. Says and, he's his little man. So what's really yeah. going on there? Is there is there something else going on? Who knows? I mean, and then I want to share one other thing from this yeah. this trip. Uh, uh, Jim doesn't seem to really comment on too many people's Twitter or Instagram, but when Sam's away, he's <laughs> commenting on Sam's Instagram post of uh, a wrestler back in the day. I think his name was Nails. And uh, oh. there's a nice photo of him and Sam, and Sam was happy to get it. And what do you, do you remember what Jim said? I can share it, but I'd like you to share it if you remember. No, I don't. You share it. You share all it. Right. I all right. I don't want to take all the things away, but of no, course, no, no. What, what is Jim going to put in the comments? Taker! That wasn't The Undertaker. He put Taker. <laughs> I remember that. Taker! And with the big exclamation point, and it's just it's embarrassing because, you know, when you look at those posts, you see who people that you know that like it. And then, of course, Jim has a huge following, so all those people see it. It's just embarrassing. And, of course, that's why Jim does it. But Sam got lucky with that one because we know Jim really likes to call The Undertaker under, not so much yeah, Taker. So not even Taker, lucky. right. He didn't get, uh, he didn't exactly. get an under in there. Um Going back here, I'm, I'm trying to pull up the uh, Travis's quote about hot dog was really funny. In that one article, I was, I was trying to uh, pull it up real quick. But as we go here, uh, well, I'll take over. You take a look at it. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, take a little search for it, and I'll uh, I'll take to our next topic, which is we got some sad news. But did we really get the news? Cooper wasn't in the studio. In fact, his internship was up, and he he's gone. I think Troy was like, where's Cooper? And he's going to be back next semester, which is good news. But did someone drop the ball there? Maybe. I don't I know. Think so. sounds, I yeah, think it sounds so. Sounds like maybe Travis, you know, T dog didn't really inform the guys of the internship ending. And I'm not sure if he even knew that it was going to be his last day, uh, that Cooper's last day was going to be, uh, the, the, the day before they, uh, they went home for the weekend, so it's a little weird. He is. He does. I. I just think. I just think it was an oversight. I mean, we yeah. we heard like we, we've we pointed out from from the beginning that they just they they worked him in more and more. They started basically plugging his stand up career with his bits and complimenting them, and it's not easy to get a compliment from those guys. It was it was well. And that was his last day before the end of his internship, so maybe that was just something they were doing anyway for for yeah, them. Yeah, to... yeah. I think they were just doing it, but yeah, that, that's yeah. that's Travis's his job to uh, hire those guys and keep track. <laughs> And, well, he blamed it on Montone because he's, right, Mont- right. he's in Montone's responsibility. But yeah, it, I'm sure it's nothing big. And of course, if you know someone's coming back soon, you don't really need to say goodbye to him. It's like, see you in a little bit, you know, and not have to do a big to do about it. So absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. And and we, I think we get him back in September, I believe, is when it starts. Up. Yeah, I think so. About a month. Um, excuse me. Uh, Jim, we, we had discussed the kiss belt buckles that seem to be the new compulsive purchases for Jim, uh, and shortly after he after he mentioned buying those last week, he was saying that, yeah, I'm just going to get a couple. I'm completely done with the posters. I can't get any more. And not only do we hear that he is getting more posters, but he is changing plans ineffectively. He changed plans to be there for a poster auction, kiss poster auction, last weekend was the wrong day so he completely burned a night or an evening waiting for him and we hear that when he he has these posters he's getting two or three of them some he he wants to hang some he kill he keeps rolled up and factory sealed factory sealed factory sealed so i i don't I, and there's something else he's doing that that su- surprised me a little bit we'll get into but do, do you see any end to this like is he gonna find every kiss poster at one point he is a compulsive buyer he buys not one, not two, but usually three of of things. He did it with his shoes. Remember when he was getting the fake Yeezys? Um, he he does that quite often. So he wants one to hang, and then a couple as backups that you can have in factory seals. And you go, I'm not doing anything with them. I just want to have them. He wants to have them. It is this diversion from the poor behavior of old Jimmy, um, and it just manifests itself in in these things. And who cares, man? The guys can. He's done, made a good living. He loves that stuff. Do what you want. But it is hilarious that he cleared his schedule on a Saturday for the auction. Auction was on Sunday. And then he was really nervous because the guy extended the auction for three minutes past the time. And he really wanted to be the last bidder in there. So it all worked out. But it got a little bit uh, concerning. 
It did. And to shift gears real quick, I did find the past. Oh, good. Or we'll hit it quick on hot dogs. I think it's worth revisiting. So this was my feature on them when I interviewed um, Travis, in addition to Jim and Sam and some some celebrities for their second round of contract negotiations. So this would have been, I think, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, So towards the end, uh, this is me talking the mysterious hot dog Cheyenne Marte in parentheses still occasionally makes polarizing on-air appearances on on the show similar to Bell I just talked about Doug Bell but mainly serves as a jack of all trades for Roberts's not Sam media empire it's worth noting hot dog reportedly packs a punch with his work ethic behind the scenes here's Travis's quote hot dog is very good at tasks and when Sam needs something done hot dog does it Tef said he's a great foil on the air but his video editing and his photoshopping skills and everything that Sam's pays him, Sam pays him to do, he's really good at. That doesn't mean that he's any less stupid than you hear him be. <laughs> he is that stupid, but he's very good. He's a savant. There you go. So there's there a little go. bit of some some video and and Photoshop. Like it is hard. Yeah, but he messes up the thumbnails. He's not sure about yes. what logo to use. So he's still and, and he's in Sam that growing like, period. Yes, and Sam doesn't like how obsessed he is with all his cameras and different right. wide angle lenses that he's never going to use. And, and, and he likes to go up to the cellar a lot when maybe he's not supposed to. No. Uh, yes, we, he has not stopped going, which I kind of it's it's a lot. I kind of still don't blame him because I've been there once and I would go all the time if I was in New York. But it, it does seem like yeah. like a lot. I have um, one more thing I want to talk about with Jimmy yeah, and go, the posters. If go, you could. Yeah, sorry, shift gears. Go ahead. No, it, it's just it's very important to him that they get framed properly. And he has a framing oh, guy. Huge, and it, yes. if his guy's out of town, he's not going to bring him in there. And you do a lot of this framing stuff, too. I mean, you want a lot of stuff framed. And do, do you have a framing guy? I do. So, and it is, it is a compulsive thing. Um, so to get this out quickly, I, when I, it was a dream job of mine to cover the Blackhawks, did it for a while. So when I had a cover story for Red Eye was the Chicago Tribune's free newspaper for a while, yeah. I, I got like seven covers about the Blackhawks. So I framed them and I would frame, like I got, when I interviewed Conor McGregor for Wall Street Journal, I framed that sports section. So I would frame my articles. I framed some signed pictures I have from celebrities um, I have a frame frame the uh, tour poster of Jimmy back there. And I went to a frame store and moved out here and I had heard my parents were going there. The guy who owns and operates a frame store that also works at the desk was my uh, baseball coach for traveling baseball hooks me up with a great discount. I have frames all over my basement. So, so no chocolate doo-doo fingers on. No, your and, but I understand the importance of getting a guy that you know will not have chocolate doo-doo fingers. It's important. And, and with what Jim brings in and how much, he probably gets a sweet discount too. So I think we yep. might have- And one last thing on that, I don't frame much, but I did frame something for my wife and got it matted and all that kind of stuff. Someone gave us a copy of the uh, score sheet that Pat Hughes had for the Cubs World Series win. That's so awesome. it's, a, it's a score book, you know, where he's yeah. keeping score on both teams yeah. and he signed it and stuff. And so, you know, we're big Cub fans in our family. I know you guys are Sox fans in yours, but, um, you know, it's just an important thing to have for sure, you know. Absolutely. I, I, you know, that 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 thing sounds amazing that you got. And yeah, every like I said, I got a frame guy, every keepsake, everything signed. It is going to the frame. Absolutely. So there the winning ticket was found. We're going to see, we're going to get to where it was over a billion dollars. And uh, I was surprised by what Sam wanted to do when he got, uh, if, if, and when he won his uh, over a billion dollars, he was fixated on getting uh, rich people fake teeth. I want to know if that surprised you, Chris. Yeah, it does. I mean, Sam's teeth are, are fine, but maybe he's just, you know, enamored by those. I, these two teeth are fake right here. So maybe I'll get front two. I, Your two front teeth. I'd take them out, but people at my mouth here, I'll feel a little bit. Um, Probably some hockey fans. I want my there. You go. <laughs> you there you go. See on Jim and Sam. There you go. Um, yeah. So those are fake. Uh, yeah. It's like I'm like a hockey guy, but yeah. So I'd probably do that. You know, they then they started looking up people that have fake teeth, and of course, it goes to one of my favorite. You know, it's James Doolin in the straight shot. You know, JD. There you go. What a jerk that guy is. And I miss all the bashing that he gets. He brought up, he's brought up a couple of times this week, but yeah. Um, I don't know what the other guys would get. Do you remember any, what the other guys wanted? I, I don't, I, I don't think they went into too much detail. That's why I was like, is that like a rich guy thing to get, to get maybe really fancy teeth? Like what I, would you get? So many other things I thought of like, um, so, so here's, this is how my mind works. I all right, do it. 
don't know the way I'm wired. I just start randomly playing out every kind of scenario that could happen in situations. That's how my mind works. So when I buy a lottery ticket, I always think about what I'm going to do. And I, first thing I would do is get one of like my baseball ticket plastic holders, put the ticket in, take a picture of it. And I would call my friend who was my wrestling coach when I was a kid that I call him coach Dean, uh, still a big, strong guy. Awesome. Super nice guy and tough. And I think he might have some firearms and I would tell him I'd give him a certain amount of money to come protect his car in front of my house (laughs) uh, with a gun until I, until I felt like it was. All uh, right. So what would you buy? What are some of the big things that you do? Just, you know, shortly, just tell us a couple of things you uh, want to do with the money. Steakhouse comedy club, Uh, travel, travel to Italy, get get a Disney world pass. Those those, those are, those are things I would do. Uh, Maybe season tickets, socks, bears. How about you? Okay, so first and foremost, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to have our own soiree. Soiree? I can wow. never say that word right, but have our party yeah, and yeah. fly the guys in. Wow, have them come that's a great idea. Here, you that's know, in the idea. town square. A great do idea. it up right. That would be the yes, first thing I want to yes. do. But you're also kind of advertising that. Do you want the attention? I don't want the attention the, at all. I want to be, you know, they talked about being, you know, make, doing an LLC and keeping it quiet. I'd love to keep it quiet. I did look up that Illinois, you don't have to reveal your name as far as I can tell, but maybe, maybe you do. I don't know. But I do that. And then for in reels, I would uh, want to build a music studio or a sound stage so we could do this right, this podcast thing, as well as uh, oh, just that's make a good music call. and, and, and yeah. do video production stuff. I still love doing the things I do. I just same here. You know, want to do it for a billion dollars. Same here. A home, nice home studio would be one of my first things now that I think about it. Jealous of Sam's. Um, there was a there was a viral video and when the guy when the guys break down these viral videos when, when they're just ridiculous like this they find the funniest things and they say the funniest things about them and this was the doc fight video do you remember where that was actually yeah that was in alabama yeah, went, and yeah, it, was. it was pretty pretty horrible i mean it wasn't it violent was. violent but yeah. it was just it seemed very just turn your stomach kind of this is bad news this doesn't need yeah, to happen a lot of people being very aggressive it could have gotten yeah could have but been they, way worse. the know. way they talk about it and i you know i just saw a little bit of it but the way they talk about it put a smile on my face so if you're going to take this bad situation and talk about um what was the 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 phelps swimmer guy do you remember what sam called him uh one of i don't know if it was the you're thinking of the comment they read on social media someone called him a black yeah. aqua man yeah black and, aqua man. Yeah, it wasn't sam but somebody else named it black aqua. part of the video the guy just you see a guy swimming to the fight and he gets out yeah, just wanted uh, to get and Jim there. pointed out that a, a sitting woman got hit in the head with a chair and yeah, that's obviously that. where things are very very bad and wrong so yeah. just insane they i it, love it, the uh it was it the um the, the wrestling commentator who who was saying "My God!" and somebody yeah. paired it perfectly with the fight. It was hilarious. Yeah, they did. So, yeah, the internet always takes those things and makes them better than they 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 are. You know, they they got to that subject a little bit too. I think from talking about these poor shop owners that yeah. you know are getting robbed, and there was a fight with a uh, with a Middle Eastern guy that had to you know hit this guy with a, a stick because he kept on robbing them. And I just feel so bad for those shop owners because there's really nothing that they can do. They're not getting. The support, you know, from from the authorities and in, in stopping this kind of stuff. So yeah, it's it's just bad. But just trying you know, to run that, a business is terrible. Those guys that run. talking about that doc fight, it was it was hilarious. So they turned to something that was pretty bad into something that's kind of funny. Absolutely. Now it seems like I don't know if Travis has gotten a little little big for his britches. Perhaps is he? I, I feel like the guy does so much so i kind of agree uh, he didn't even he didn't even uh raise a stink about it when when jim pointed out during an interview that you d- you did not go down and get my uh cold brew travis was like i'm sorry i forgot made a couple jokes about it but like travis does so much that i don't yeah. i don't want to put this on him he does so much i know behind the scenes i, I you know, know we'd but, love uh, to have travis on this podcast you know he'd be great i'd love to ask him a lot of questions but I feel like we bash him and I don't want to. No, I want we to do, this is not podcast. a Travis bashing so podcast. I, I don't no want way. to bash him, no but I kind of want to do bash him on this one because I think, you know. I think it's his job to get caught. I don't know if it's his, his job. Out. It's just I just think it's part of the whole situation that this is what's been happening for years. Now, you know, I've been around guys that are, let's say, talent, and you usually just take care of them. It's part of what you're doing, you know. Now, as talent, we're talent now, I guess, on this part. Like, 
Yeah. I I mean, I don't, I get my own coffee and I think I'd probably always do that if I was on a show. I just, I've never been one of those guys like, please serve me. And I don't think Jim's really doing that and he's giving them shit. So whatever. Yeah. 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 That does make me want one of their, I want to try that cold brew there. It sure does sound good. Especially when you're listening in the morning, like, oh man, I wish I had a cold brew instead of this stupid, you know, Keurig coffee that I'm brewing at home. But speaking of talent, and this was something I found interesting when I started talking about writers with, um, was that, that would have been Mike Figs, I believe, right? Talking about writers or or was that Modi? I don't know when they were talking about the writers. It might have just, I think it was just, they were just or, talking about it. Organically it kind of came up. Yeah, in, in, in general. And of course, for those that don't know, writers are what you send out to the promoters and saying, okay, when we come in and do this show in your town and your place, this is what we want our green room to be like. You know, our dressing rooms yeah. need this. There's a famous story, and I'm sure you've heard it. Van Halen used to put in their riders, no brown M&Ms, right? We don't want any brown. All the M&Ms, you got to go and you pull all the brown ones out, right? People are like just saying, you know what? That, they're just being jerks. Yeah. Well, I found out that they're not just being jerks. They did that on purpose to see if the promoter is reading the contract and seeing the rider. Because if they don't do the brown M&Ms thing, who's, who's going to say that they're going to do anything that's supposed to be important, like safety checks or, you know, paying them correctly, you know, line, line, line item by, you know, veto of some sort of, of sure. what they're going on there. Sure. So, so they throw that in there just to make sure they they uh, they are reading it, is but what I've poor read. production stagehand or production assistant has to go through all the goddamn It, it does. So, so what I don't, it's still kind of dickish to me. Does Troy have something on his writer? Yes, and it was extraordinary. I'm glad you bring this up. It is a picture of Mr. Toots, and I loved his reasoning and why he still does it when he's touring with Black Caviar, because he loves that. Not only is you know as a family member to him, he loves Mister Toots, but he loves the, getting the compliments and getting in the cute cat conversations. I, I we don't have pets, but I love that. I love that it just makes him happy on the road, and he likes these conversations. We'll get into this a little bit deeper, but softening of Troy is a whole new thing oh, we're man. experiencing this year. So we'll we'll get into that a little deeper. But yeah, it. I'm here for Sam it. said uh, someone said Sam should have one of Hot Dog, right? <laughs> Can you imagine Sam tra- traveling with one of Hot Dog and then Hot Dog is there? He, yeah, exactly. I think Sam said, uh, someone said, yeah, and he's there with you. And that is just amazing. Yeah, you could picture him having a, some kind of weird picture. And we did get a visual yeah. of Hot Dog and, and him being there. Why, why don't you? I can tell you what that weird picture would be things. if they used it. Because we heard that great story about Hot Dog um, going with them up to Montreal. And I guess they didn't have a room for, for him because he wasn't really on the show. He was just kind of Sam's man, right? And so uh, they went up there, they drove separately, and he worked his way into staying in uh, Handsome Rob's room. If everybody remembers, Handsome Rob used to work on the show, sitting in his room. And he got in there a little earlier, pretending to be his partner, if you will. And so he's in the room, Rob gets in there, and Rob walks in, and he's playing video games with his shirt off, sitting on the edge of bed. So Rob took a picture of him, and and it's not a flattering picture, and, and Hot Dog doesn't really like it much, but Sam likes to show it around, and he was just doing that this weekend in Detroit. So awesome! And I, I, roles were described on, on yes, the, roles. And to be fair, he looks like a skinny guy. So he's, he, I, I I give my my son uh, some crap when he's uh, I tell him he's skinny fat. You know, he's a skinny guy, but sometimes he'll have rolls around himself because he hasn't been working out a lot. So you're skinny fat. It is about so, so Hot about Dog it. might be skinny fat. Might have been. Uh, so another thing that broke down this week, uh, I don't know how funny it was, if there was jokes, because I always think about being in a shark bite situation. Yeah. But a woman wa- lost, what did she lose? Tw- she claimed to they lose said 20, 20 pounds. pounds, but that was yeah. weird because she got bit like in the calf. So she might have been a heftier, sturdier woman. A very, very strong, meaty calf. There you go. Uh, and that that kind of got the guys into talking about stories from uh, of having scars. And we know this is, it's always... Jim's Jim's little Jimmy story is always hilarious. And as Sam and Travis point out, always a little heartbreaking as yes. well. You know, the one where he's was he, he revisited the one where he's running away from uh bullies, one of which uh <laughs> I think Jim describes as a throat bully. <laughs> yeah, he's a throat bully, maybe throat that Jim bully. referred to in Monster Rain, but yeah, yeah, he was running away from him and uh he tripped and fell and, and hit his head pretty hard and had to go to the ER. And I think it was like his third trip to the ER at a young age or whatever, you know, he, of course he did that. He got hit in the face with the baseball. He was pitching to his buddy underhand. The guy hit a line drive right as noggin. And then of course the pray for me time where he got hit, uh, catching a, f- a fly ball, I believe. So, oh, mis- mis- yeah. so it's, it's happened. Uh, you know, I, uh, I had to go to the ER at a bad, uh, point, not a bad point. It was actually a good point in my life, but at a bad timing. So I, I played high school football and I don't know if you can see this right here, but there's a scar 
on my hand it's, right it's about like there. You, it's a little hard to see. Yeah. I broke my hand uh, on a Friday night football game. Man. And it was the night that I was flying out to Los Angeles to go to a photo shoot. Now, we talked earlier uh, in this uh, podcast series about I did some modeling and stuff. But I won a contest that kind of started all that up. And I have the article here. You'll love this. What? There's your little man's right there. Dude, you put that closer. Bring that well, in. I'll, I'll put it up Bring on the screen. In. I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> uh, but there I am right there. And uh, so I won a contest in Teen Magazine. In How is that not framed? How is that well, not framed? Get, get, get. There's some other stuff. There's a... Uh, Hang no on a way. second. That's, that's you? That's me. See the name? Oh, my God. It says, oh, boy, meet <laughs> Teen yeah. Dream Guy. Enjoy that. But um, so that led to uh, uh, some modeling. I was able to work a little bit and then came my way snack. through college. So Man, yeah, it was. Don't show that to good, Sam. But, He'll call yeah. you a snack. Yeah. Wow. But uh, so my little accident and going to the ER um, happened, right? So long story short, game gets over at 10 o'clock, has to go to the ER. My flight is a red eye. I think we're leaving at like two in the morning or somewhere around there to get to Los Angeles. And I'm flying by myself as a 17 year old. My mom must be a saint. She's like, you'll be fine. You're okay. A lot of trust. I mean, I, I had my hand wrapped. I broke it. So if you look at those article in that article, and I'll post some of those photos on here, you never see my left hand in some of the shots because they're hiding it behind the models or we have because I had a big cast on it. So they thank, weren't happy with God me you, the uh, magazine. Thank God you have that mug you have. Well, because otherwise, if you're just a hand model. That gig was was gone. That gig was done. If you were only hand, yeah, model. like Joey and Friends, where I could have been the the, the twin the hand Stands twin. Up. If you ever, there you go. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So that was my uh, my scar story. But wow. you know, I'm going back to this. the going back to the seventies and the eighties. Nothing makes me happier than when Jimmy shared stuff from the seventies and eighties because that's my era too. And he was sharing. I don't know how even this came up, but one of the best commercials ever made. For A1 steak shot sauce, because it's not chopped ham, Scott. It's chopped steak. So oh. you might as well put A1 steak sauce on a hamburger. What was that commercial all about back then? So weird and creepy, but also amazing hearing it now. And arguably the best break of the week the guys did. Uh, yeah, there was, there was, I think there was a couple of those guys. And they found, they looked at some move with that guy and they found some movies he was in. He's still working. Yeah, he's still, he's in like Sopranos and, and all these, all these great series. But and, so creepy. And they kept on saying, why is he so close to people? And the things that he would say <laughs> to his high fine nephew or whatever, ladies, yeah, young yeah, guys. Yeah. It was very creepy. That was the way he talked was creepy. And then there was the one where the girls were giggling and he's like, what, what is it? And she goes, she thinks you're funny. It's like, what? But she thinks you're cute. And she it's like this 50 year old <laughs> It's a 45 year old oh, guys. God. And, but I, I, those like corny, uncomfortable commercials, I feel like they were still kind of lasting in the 90s when I was watching a lot of TV and maybe, and probably the, in the late 80s too. Yeah. And that led into what I think made this, maybe in my eyes, the best break of the week because we got to revisit B from Abducted in Plain Sight because they're talking about the creepy guys and, and everything. And oh man, hear, hearing, uh, them talk about that again. That a documentary was just the craziest thing. And I remember that coming out and that was probably maybe two or three years before the pandemic. So it was, it was maybe six years ago, seven years ago. And that thing came out and it was a jaw dropping moment. The one they shared on the show when, you know, this dad had his daughter, you know, abducted. His wife was messing around with the, the guy they thought abducted, abducted her. And then he had to be with the guy in the car. And let's just say for lack of better words, had to help him out with the situation that arose and uh, and proceeded to do help help him out with that. And it was just the weirdest, creepiest thing ever. But boy, it made me laugh when they're talking about it this week. God, and b before I remember dying when when they would break that down, it was so good to hear again. And you know, it's just just a couple guys. One guy helps another guy relax. It's just There's nothing wrong with it. Jesus. It's so weird. And then they said they were gonna boot Edna from the Twitter oh. profile pic. And I went and looked and they didn't. But they were going to put yeah. B back in the uh, in the profile pic, and maybe they'll do it next week. We'll see. Maybe they will. They're usually men of their words, so I could I could see that I could see that happening. Uh, speaking of being men or men of their word, I would love to see Troy actually meet Taylor Swift because not only we've heard for a few weeks now that they'll play Taylor Swift and get Troy's reaction. We know Troy loves her. Who doesn't at this point? But Troy twice this week. 
at least I can recall twice said that he would cry if he met her <laughs> and it was sincere and I love it. And he also said, uh, God, what did he say? Something about how she, um, has earned these accolades. She's worthy of her. Yeah. Of her every, accolades. every accolade she gets, she, she deserves yeah. and is worthy. Yeah. yeah he is the, the Troy's love for, for her knows no limits and maybe it should, but <laughs> at this point it knows no, he's giddy. He's, you know, he gets tearful. He's singing. They, they, Travis would put on a song. He's like, oh, Travis, yes. And he'd go and, and he would sing. It's up. Yeah. And he'd sing. And then Travis would turn down the volume or Mike would turn down the volume on it and, and try to hear Troy singing by himself. Um, yeah. Troy is absolutely enamored with her. And uh, that's fine. That's healthy. I love it. But I love what Sam is calling him now. I don't know if you took this, but Sam is calling him this retired DJ from Orlando. With sun faded tattoos. <laughs> That's his description uh, of Troy. He's not retired, Sam. <laughs> so it's healing him. It's healing Troy. You know, let's go with it. I, yeah, see, I think that's that's part of the joke, and that's funny, but I think it's actually true. I think we are getting a more sensitive Troy. I do think Taylor brings it out of him on with with him from him. It, yeah, we heard about a show, man. He's he does on our show. He does yoga and yeah. he's just chill, and he's into he's grills some shrimpers. And I, I I love that he can mellow out. I love that he loves T Swizzle. Like good for Troy. Yeah, and you know else loves her is is Travis's family and friends. Yes. But they're not going to get the opportunity to see her, at least not yet, because they had a horrible time trying to find tickets for her new leg. They're going to go up to Toronto's and driving oh, distance, man. trying to other, and they just couldn't get those seats. And that's so expensive. My daughter was fortunate enough to go see her uh, when she was visiting my son in, in Brooklyn. My son lives out there, unreal, and uh, went awesome. with his uh, his girlfriend out there. So that was right. that was pretty cool. And I'll throw up a photo of that. Oh, um, but yeah, she had a great time doing that i just i can't i'm just either too cheap or too old that i just can't see myself spending that kind of money to go to a a concert if there's any way for anyone to swing it it, it's looks amazing my sister got to see her in cincinnati jealous of that um yeah just great and speaking speaking of troy when it was announced that the like billion and a half dollar lotto winner uh won it was announced uh, that it was purchased in florida right away i was hoping florida troy not the case, but then we heard that it was purchased at a Publix in Florida. I go, oh, why couldn't it have just been Troy? He's probably right yes. there at that Publix. Getting chicken. You know, getting, his, chicken. getting his rotisserie but, uh, chicken. It was, alas, it was not. But was Jimmy, not <laughs> you know, Jimmy was, was thankful that, you know, was, wasn't was at a fancy place. You're right, because because we know. We know All lottery, lottery tickets are tickets, sold yeah. in fancy places, right? You go to Nordstrom's the Ritz. Or, yeah. or the Ritz. The Ritz so. No, they're gas stations. Trump uh, Tower. You know, grocery stores does i guess uh, does jim not buy lottery tickets we know he does because he has to do his all his counting of the numbers and making sure instead of scanning his you know mega millions thing so uh, i don't know what he meant by fancy place but i think he meant just like a regular person's place which usually those yeah lottery tickets i think I, I love this about jim i i think i do the same thing sometimes it's a show where you got to fill time and talk <laughs> once in a while as, as brilliant as he is, as perfect as his, his lines and jokes are. I think he just says stuff sometimes. <laughs> this was just we do it here all the time too. And we're not even we do. anywhere near his uh, talent level. And I love that. I love that. They, I love that. That did not go unchecked. They got him right away on that. Um, that was great. Moving along here. I, this was hilarious and brilliant when they were talking about Man, uh, the I children think, i think it was yeah 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 and then they got a little bit into like ted lasso and the show shrinking was really good it does have the same exact feel as ted lasso my wife and i liked it i, I love call it, it like I love uh, it. what i call it i call it like um like sad cute like sad cute funny is like ted lasso right, her husband in 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 shrinking um the neighbor um ted mcginley is that no what is that the guy's name that sounds right maybe, maybe sounds not familiar. Anyway, he, he also was in um, Married with Children. So that's how they got that connection. Oh, is that yeah. The guy, same guy was in that okay. stuff. So, yeah, they're talking about Married that's with Children was, yeah. and talking about, um, you know, all these actors and the the funny, weird things they do. Like, you come in the living room and they're talking about weird stuff. <laughs> what did Jim go with? Do he you remember? Went with, yes. what Like a Ted Lasso type. So what I call like sad, cute, funny show, like a dramedy about a serial killer. <laughs> So like, and the way they all kind of tagged it and added on, like, oh, dad, like, yeah, it's it like the BTK killer comes yeah. in from, you know, into the living room, but he's only seen when he returns to the living room after committing a murder. So like, hey, what were you doing? Oh, uh, nothing. 
late so night they, they had quirky yeah quirky little weird stuff so yeah that was that was a funny take and zoom, zoom in maybe maybe the awkward yeah. office i don't know there's a, mm-hmm. there's a blood blood spatter on the shoe i think yeah. jim said uh do you remember when uh and this might be before your time but the the remember the uh, airplane movies and then they did yeah. the uh, tv show that had the same characters in it it was like a cop I remember show. The show that's awesome that there was a show there's a TV show and they used to do at the end, they'd go, you know, be at the end in seventies TV shows, they'd freeze, you know, like they actually would freeze a video when they're like laughing at each other and doing that kind of stuff. Well, in this TV show, that was kind of like an airplane kind of thing. They would freeze themselves. And then like someone would walk by in the past and they're still laughing, you know, someone else, a, a bird would come land on their shoulder, but their guys froze instead of the video frozen. Then they'd roll credits on top of that. It's That's worth awesome. checking out. That's Look awesome. up it on YouTube. It. Yeah. I got to watch airplane again. They actually talk about that on the show. I can't remember what the name of the TV, a police squad, I think it was. Maybe. Oh, yes. Yes. I did watch that. I did watch yeah. that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. check that. Check out the endings when they do the credits. They just freeze. That sounds awesome. Um, that's So a phenomenal idea. I can actually see that being like an FX show. I, like Jimmy should try to sell that. Like FX or yeah. X or something. Um, well, it's kind of like Barry, if you think about it. Right. You know, for sure. Like, with like a different kind of of. Like, so with humor, like a little more different. Oh, that's a good humor. call. It's close. Maybe yeah. just a little bit, a little bit different. Um, like actually, like try, tr- actually trying to be a dramedy would would work so well. I think that would be good. Yeah. Um, something that didn't work was when old school rapper Melly Mel, uh, dissed he he dissed Eminem. Yeah. And it was not it was it was he just didn't put out the initial diss track. What he, he did in an interview, there's some these dumb lists. I, they drive yeah. nuts. Because they're just to get clicks, and they always. You're right. I think Jim said it that they they usually put something ridiculous like in a top five or top ten of any list just to cause controversy. So yeah, I think comments Travis said that too, and, and yeah, yeah. it's like it was a fiftieth fifty best mm-hmm. rappers, but it wasn't like rappers for music, but more like the MCs, right? The guys right, that are really right, doing right. it. So I mean, I was number five, and. And, and he should be. I mean, he, he's great. And I guess that this was, be, yeah. you know, that Eminem, because he's white, shouldn't be number five. Melly Mel was saying, you know, he was that, saying that he got it just because he was white. Oh, and, I got it now. Yeah. Just because if he was black, he would have gotten lower or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it was weird, but they had some diss tracks. And and the best part about that diss track was when <laughs> someone kind of had to to do it. Do you remember how that happened? It was Travis. And at the time I was not a fan because I wanted to, I have a huge Eminem fan. I wanted to get Me right too. to hear it yet. I want to get right to play it, hear it. But uh, Sam, I think it was Sam. I thought it was Jim at Sam, first, but Sam, Sam beatbox. did the beatboxing. Yeah. And then Travis did the rap and Sam's beatboxing was so loud. You couldn't even hear Travis rap the lyrics. Travis went uh, for it. You know, he was probably was showing fun. off because, you know, earlier in the week, Troy wouldn't sing Taylor Swift songs out loud. Right. So Travis said, yeah, I'll rap it. Let's go. And he was on top of it. And, uh, and it, it was very good and very funny, but we did get blessed to see, or not to see, but actually to hear Eminem's rap. And boy, he's so good, man. He just he's bodied. So, Mel. There's something about Dubai and whatever. It was, uh, he, Dubai. It was just, it was yeah. so good. And he's he's awesome. So yeah, I, I think uh, Eminem deserves every accolade he gets. Absolutely. Like Taylor Swift. Absolutely. And Sam had a great point to like, like why provoke him? You're just going to get. You're just going to get murdered. He's so good. He's so good. He's going to eat you. So I have a weird fact that I want to share with you that I'm not sure if you caught. I mean, you already had the magazine spread. I I know. I don't don't have any more show. You always always bring a lot. Today, I'm I'm beside myself today. I'm embarrassing myself. I took my teeth out. I showed my 17-year-old modeling pictures. I'm. This is an all-time great episode already of of the JSTS. Yeah, there you go. But this weird fact I thought was hilarious. So. If you ever see Jim Norton on an airplane and he's wearing his sweatpants, he's not wearing any underwear, we found out. He said that he gets to the airport and takes them off in the restroom so he can be comfortable on the plane. So he, I'm just getting this visual, and I don't want to get too much of the visual. He goes to the airport with underwear and sweatpants, goes to the restroom there, takes off the underwear, he takes sweatpants, takes off the underwear, puts sweatpants back on. So he can be comfortable on the plane. So I don't ever want to see Jim on a plane because I know he's, you know, very free. I would for the story. And I this is a thing from this, this week was so good. I can't believe I forgot about that. And I don't know if they spent a lot of time on it either. They didn't. It was it was I spent more time on it. I think it was hilarious. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, so I thought I thought you said that you had a story. So I thought I'd be like, I do the same thing. No, I, 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 well, I mean, who it's knows? I probably story. do, but no, I just, I did think that was just a, a weird 
a weird fact that we found out from the store that was kind of a throwaway thing that could, we could have spent a half an hour oh, on. Yeah. So no, I'm glad you brought that up because I completely forgot about that. Uh, let's talk. We're, we're, we're trucking along here. We're, we're kind of getting towards the end. Let's talk best guess. As I said at the top of the show, it, it was just a perfect mix overall. Only three guests that I counted in uh, Mike Figs, Modi, and Lori uh, Palmentary, I think is how you say your name. But yeah. I, again, the, the talk was so good in the studio. The guests were great. It was a perfect mix. I'm going to let you go first. Who do you think was the best guest this week? Well, I always like kind of giving a little bit about each one yeah, please, um, please. as we go through. So Mike Figs came on and uh, he, he's a funny guy. He was talking about he's in debt from his Vegas vacation. Damn. So he really kind of spent a lot of money and it's still paying off his Vegas vacation, which was kind of a weird thing. I don't think anybody's ever paid off a big, well, maybe they haven't. I just can't imagine it. He talked about getting bumped uh, for Sandler, which of course, yeah, go right. ahead. That'd right. be great. And then uh, the best thing was him talking about him hawking his crap on eBay and giving out that info. Go to my eBay store where you can find the Brita water filter. Um, I got a magic bullet um, blender and spice racks on there. So that was, uh, <laughs> that's what he's promoting. Go to his eBay. And he even said some of it may have fallen off the truck and being Italian, I understand what that means. <laughs> right. Right. He was pretty funny. And then Modi was great. You know, he, they, they've talked about him being just this great gift bringer. He always seems to bring gifts. He brought them uh hats this week um, that has uh, his saying. And it, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's just kind of like being chill, being in the moment. And I thought that was kind of cool. He's a very sweet guy. I guess he came out gay uh, recently or a couple yeah, years ago yeah, and he's really yeah. he's really proud and that's great he's on that chosen ones tour or he's promoting that and so it's all the jewish guy jewish comedians coming out there and and doing it i know Voss is on there and we'll talk about him in a minute um but i guess he gave jimmy this tray last time he was in and and jimmy they point to it and she goes yeah yeah that's it he goes and jimmy said something it was so funny he goes you know i have i keep my bare aspirins on there and um and and Bare aspirins are kind of this old typey kind of not Advil. Yeah. It's not a leave. It's bare aspirins. So Jim pointed out, yeah, he goes, you know, I, I, I've been taking aspirin like I had a headache in 1978. And Modi said, yeah, I had a bear recently. I took a bear the other day. And Jim said, be careful how you phrase that. Make sure you phrase <laughs> it properly. So, you know, being gay, a bear means something different. So, yeah. yeah, that was pretty funny. So Modi was great. And then last, you know, Lori, uh, she's taping a special at Kevin Smith's. Uh, Smogcast place. Yep. I didn't know Kevin Smith had a a, a place. I know he had the yeah. comic book store. It's like Red East Bank or Red. I Bank. was on an episode of that show when he had the show on. Was it, that there? It, it was that there. It was in this. It was it was in Red Bank, and they moved they moved to another location. But okay, uh, they're both awesome. And yeah, they do like they do. I think watch along movies and and Q and A's and okay. comedy. It seems like a cool venue. I'd love to go. And there. if you think about, you know, I remember following Kevin Smith when all that stuff. And Smogcast that was kind of the first podcast kind of stuff that was yes, coming out totally he was, he was you know he was on the year. cutting edge of that stuff i yeah. remember watching one of his specials where he comes out and he answers one question i think it was about the too fat to fly one and it was oh. one question and he talked the whole hour and a half about that one question he goes anybody else have another question okay good night and because it was it was one question that he answered and talked he's about the best, so man he was the best he's the best the, the way he he kind of talked through his mental health crisis he had like a oh yeah years ago was so just helpful to anyone experience. Well, we talked about this so, last week. I think honest, it was yeah. writers. No, writers. Writers are the best. I mean, you're a writer. That's why I like you so much. Thank people you. that can put, and they, the guys talked about it this week too, people that can put yes. great vocabularies awesome. to the written word. That's why I like Sorkin so much. I mean, and Kevin Smith is one of those guys. He's a writer first and foremost. And so he's able to put feelings into something that we can digest through the written word. And he's amazing at that. But back to Lori, uh, she's a screenwriter and that's yeah, how she yeah. kind of got her start is, is doing that. So that's kind of cool. And then she also worked in a nursing home, which was very funny when, when Jim and, and she were kind of talking about the things that might not smell too good in a nursing home. So <laughs> for me, my guest of the week, I'm going to have to go with the pies on. I know Modi is great and I know Lori's, but Mike Figs right. just Promoting his eBay stuff made me laugh so much. It's like that was great. That was great because that's so that was funny. like that. That's legit how he is. It's a comic yeah. on a national radio show. You can promote yourself, promote your gigs. And he's talking about, about eBay. Brenda filter. <laughs> who was your Who was your guest uh, of the week? So you did a great job breaking them down. So I, I totally agree. Mine, mine's Modi, and I, it it was cool to hear him be comfortable with how his 
life is now and yeah and he does a lot of gigs like the, like the Jewish uh, show you're talking about for Orthodox Jews is a huge part of his and they're cool with income. That. And I was I was very relieved for him to hear that they're they were cool with that. I, I don't know. I don't know much about, you know, how they practice and what's cool and what's not. So that's refreshing to hear. And I agree. Such a classy, like well-spoken guy. I know Jim Sweet. loves him. So I, it was a great appearance. Uh, Modi was mine for sure. It was nice Absolutely. to kind of meet Lori, too. But Modi. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Modi brought uh, his significant other, too. And it's just. I like when relationships are just real. It doesn't matter. Boy, boy, girl, girl, boy, girl. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I just, that's a real relationship and they have a, you know, a life together. And I just, I think that's great. Yeah, that's for sure. Great. Same here. Now our last, but not least, this is, this is a jam packed show, man. We, we added some length here, some size. And uh, I, I think it's worked out nicely. Our, our, our last topic is of course, as always the line of the week. And sometimes you have some finalists and I, I don't know if you, if you, it was hard for you or if you want to say a couple, but feel free. So I, I, I did just narrow it down to one this time, but right. three of them that I liked the most literally came in the last two minutes of the Modi interview. I oh. think uh, there's something that had to do on the okay. plane. It was the thing we, I talked about with the bear aspirin and, uh, and, and Modi's bear. So, I mean, those were two of them, but I think that hit me the most is that, Towards the end of uh, the interview, and they're giving Voss a lot of crap during the interview, calling him stupid but funny, kind of like you talked about with 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 you know hot dog that there's a reason for him, but he's still stupid. Yeah, the guys are saying Voss is is stupid but very funny, but he's stupid. So Voss called in to defend himself, and uh, and Voss said, you know, I don't have to clean this up a little bit. He said, Do you know why you guys are always talking about me so much? He goes, Because I'm the effing legend. And Jim goes. I got to say this again, because I have to change the word. So he goes, I'm I'm effing a legend. And Jim goes, yes, you are effing a legend. Bonnie. <laughs> that so was it's, it works a lot better oh, if you could say that word. But uh, yeah, so that was that if you go back and listen to the last minute of the show, it was quick. It was funny. And yeah, the legend is Bonnie, not not Voss. That was hilarious. Got one? Yes, I do. And actually, this was from the Modi interview as well. Uh, a very another very quick Jimmy line. I think Modi was talking about maybe it was when he was talking about getting fl like flack, probably jokingly from the Jim and Sam fans on social media. And he's like, he he's like, yeah, you know, your types of fans. And Jim right away goes, incest survivors. <laughs> Just, so <laughs> Just so quick. Oh, that so guy, that man. It, man. It, it, look, this was a, a jam packed show. As I said, thank you, everybody. For watching and listening we really appreciate it. we have a lot of fun doing this uh thanks so much for all you do as usual chris yeah you know it was it was a, a good show we both were kind of talking about we're a little tired after this week and talking to you about the show just gets me ex excited and energetic and i uh, can't wait for next week and you guys should probably come and see us next week because you don't know if i'll take my teeth out again or <laughs> if i'll throw up some embarrassing photos of myself but you know, it's always going to be fun. He never knows what's going to happen here in, uh, in what we call the town square. Thanks for watching and listening to the Jim and Sam Town Square. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell, not Doug Bell, so you don't miss an episode. And if you're just listening to the podcast, please leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate it. <laughs>